This video is going to talk about using ease uh, for optimization and specifically for optimization problems that only have one independent parameter. So optimization is uh, fundamental to being an engineer. Uh, it's the process where we uh, vary some set of independent variables in order to minimize or maximize an objective function. And in engineering, the objective function is often something like the cost or the weight or, or the efficiency of some uh, system or component. Optimization is often the underlying reason why we develop models of a physical system in the first place. We're going to use optimization to identify uh, some kind of an optimal design or optimal operating condition. The first step in an optimization process is to develop the model itself. Right, So we have some uh, component, system, process, whatever it is, we want to optimize, we need to have a model of that process. And that model is going to include some inputs. These are the independent design variables that we can vary. And <coughs> the model will then uh, predict some output. Uh, and one of these outputs we will uh, identify as being the objective function. So the function that we want to either maximize or minimize. So let's illustrate the process here with a very simple objective function, which I've shown here. Um, and we can enter this, uh, this objective function into ease, uh, as I've done here. And uh, we're going to try to maximize the value of f uh, by varying x over a range from 0 to 180 degrees. And we can do this manually for this one-dimensional problem uh, pretty easily by just uh, generating a parametric table and putting in this table x and f and then um, changing x from 0 to 180 degrees and then if I make a plot of this you can see that sure enough f does have a maximum value um, in that range and that occurs at approximately uh, x equals 70 degrees right in that sort of area. So if we want to do this uh, more rigorously using the algorithms in ease um, we, can, we can go ahead and do that and the first step is to make sure that we have uh, the right number of degrees of freedom, right? So um, I can't carry out an optimization unless there are some variables that ease can, can, can change in order to do that optimization. So here, if I specify that x is 20 degrees, I can get a solution. Um, but the fact that I can get a solution means that I don't have any degrees of freedom. Everything is specified, right? So if I want to have some degrees of freedom, I have to um, free up some of these variables. And in this case, I'm going to free up x by just commenting it out. Okay, so if I um, comment out x and I go to uh, min-max from the calculate menu, you can see that uh, ease will uh, identify the fact that I have one degree of freedom and therefore put up the uh, find minimum or maximum dialog, which is shown here. Okay? The top part of this dialog sets up the, um, the actual optimization. So first I have to specify, do I want to minimize an objective function or maximize it? So here we're going to maximize uh, the value of f. So I'll select f as our objective function. And then over here, ease has determined that there's only one independent parameter. So I can select one independent variable to do the maximization. Um, the other thing I can um, vary here is the stopping criteria. So that basically um, controls when the optimization process is terminated. And you can see that that um, will happen uh, in one of two ways. One way is if I exceed the maximum number of um, iterations. So here, if 600 iterations happens, then I guess I'm going to give up and call it good. Uh, the other way that the uh, process will be terminated is if I um, meet the relative convergence tolerance, which is set here to be 1 times 10 to the minus 4, or 0.01%. And what that refers to is, as I am iterating from, you know, iteration to iteration, if the objective function changes by less than 0.01%, um, then the optimization process is going to be considered uh, done. And the other thing I can do is check this little uh, stop if error occurs uh, box. If I don't check that box, then ease will um, ignore a, a convergence error. So if it chooses a value of x where it's unable to calculate a value of f, for example, it won't stop. It'll keep going, and it'll just assume that value of x is not optimal and sort of throw it away. 
Um, <clears throat> the other thing I have to do before I run an optimization is set up the, um, the bounds, the parameter space, uh, of the independent variables that I'm going to search inside of. And I do that by clicking the bounds button here, and it'll bring up this variable information um, uh, window that has all of my independent variables in it. In this case, there's only one, which is X. And in this window, I have to specify what are the bounds of the independent parameters uh, where I'm going to look for my optimal solution. So here I want a lower bound of zero and an upper bound of 180 degrees. Ease will not look outside of that range when it's searching for the optimal value. And then I also have to give it a guess value that's inside that range. And different optimization algorithms will use that guess, values in, that guess value in different ways. Some of the optimization algorithms won't use the guess value at all, um, but, but you still have to specify it here. All right, so at that point, then I'm ready to do the optimization. And you'll see that uh, because it's a one-dimensional optimization, I only can choose from two different methods, right? The golden section search and the quadratic approximations method. And you know the details of actually implementing these methods is programmed in ease, so you don't have to know how that works. Um, but, but even so, having some understanding of how it works is often really useful uh, in order to select the right uh, algorithm for the job. Right? So let's talk a little bit about how these work uh, sort of conceptually so that you can can understand what's going on behind the scenes or if you don't care then you can skip to the end of the video and just um, just see how, how to actually start the optimization so what the golden section search does is it um, successful successively narrows the range in which the uh, extreme value so either the maximum or minimum is known to exist right so it starts by taking the entire range so in this case the entire range is 0 uh, to 180 degrees and it will evaluate the objective function at these two uh, bounds, uh, which I have labeled here as points 1 and 2. And then it goes uh, inside the range and it tests two points. Right. So the first point is um, 0 0.6182, so 61.82% of the way uh, from the left side of the range. And 61.82% uh, is not accidental. Um, that is the golden ratio. Right. So it's carefully chosen. Um, and that's going to be then 0.3. And we'll take the second point, which is 0.4, and that will be 0.6182, or 61.82% of the way from the right side, right? So in this particular case, 61.82% from 0 to 180 is 111.3 degrees. That's going to be 0.3. And 61.82 from 180 moving towards 0 is 68.7 degrees. So that's going to be 0.4. So then what we do is we evaluate the objective function at 3 and 4, and we look at the points that we have, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we just throw away, if we're looking for the maximum, we just throw away the lowest point. So in this case, um, we would either throw away points 1 or 2. Let's, let's throw away point 2. So now we have reduced the range uh, inside of which we need to look for the maximum. Right Now I only have to look from 1 uh, to 3. right? And then I just do the same thing. So inside of the range from 1 to 3, I'm going to have two points, right? The first point we already have, it's 0.4. Because 0.6182 was carefully chosen to be the golden ratio, 0.4 is 61.82% of the way from 0.1 to 0.3, right? So now i got to get one more point, which is 61.82% of the way from 0.3 to 0.1, and we'll call that 0.5, right? And in this case, 0.5 will be at 42.5 degrees. So now I evaluate the um, objective function at 0.5, and you can see if I throw away the lowest point that I have remaining, which is 0.1, I've now reduced the range from 3 to 5, right? So I get two points inside of that range from 3 to 5. I already have 4. I'd have to get 6. And you just keep repeating this, repeating this, repeating this until you reach the stopping criteria for the optimization, right? To actually... Um, do the optimization. You don't have to know any of that stuff. You just would select golden section search and you would hit OK. And you would go off and do the steps that we just talked about and find that the optimal value of X is 68.6 uh, .6 degrees. And that results in an objective function value of 2.115. And that optimization required 25 iterations to hit my stopping criteria. All right, so that's one of the two methods. 
Um, you can kind of see how it works, right? Uh, the other method is called quadratic approximations. And <clears throat> the basic idea here is that um, you operate on three points at a time within your range, and you assume that these three points fit a quadratic function, and then you use that quadratic function to carry out um, the optimization of e associated with each iteration. So, for example, if I start this process, the first iteration I'm going to have three points, and those three points will be the lower and upper bounds, so 0 and 180 degrees, and then whatever guess value I chose, which happened to be 25 degrees. So you can see 1, 2, and 3 are my three points. And then what I'm going to do is assume that the objective function is a quadratic function that goes through those three points. So here's my quadratic function. It has three coefficients, a, b, and c. And I will just choose a, b, and c such that they go through these three points. And that is then going to be called quadratic 1, right? So that's, that's just a very simple process to find um, a, b, and c uh, that go through these, to, to give me a quadratic that goes through these three points. And now I have a quadratic approximation to my objective function. And the idea then is that I will figure out where is that quadratic approximation maximized or minimized, in this case maximized. And that will occur when the slope uh, df dx is equal to zero. So here's df dx. If I set it equal to zero, it tells me that this is the predicted optimal value of x based on that quadratic, right? So um, doing that suggests that uh, the predicted uh, uh, value of x is 90 degrees. That, that maximizes my, uh, my objective function. So that 90 degrees will be my new point. We'll call it point 4, right? So here's point 4. And um, <coughs> I just repeat this process, right? So um, I will uh, throw away the lowest point if I'm doing a maximization, right? So in this case, I'm going to keep points 1, 3, and 4 here. 1, 3, and 4. Uh, throw away point 2. And I'll repeat the process. So now I'm going to come up with another quadratic that goes through 1, 3, and 4. You can see I'm calling that quadratic 2. I'm going to figure out where quadratic 2 is maximized. So it looks like it's maximized right here at like, I don't know, 70 degrees or so. And that is now giving me 0.5. So here's 0.5. I'll throw away the lowest point uh, again. So that's going to be throwing away 0.1. And I will have points 3, 5, and 4. And I would continue that, now fitting a quadratic to those. And uh, we would continue uh, that process again until the stopping criteria for the optimization was uh, met. So again, you don't have to know what's going on, but it's really useful to understand, at least conceptually, what's the steps ease is taking behind the scenes. Um, typically, for a smooth function like this, the quadratic approximations method will converge a little bit quicker than uh, the golden section search. It's just a little bit smarter uh, in terms of how it's doing the optimization. So if I actually want to do the quadratic approximations method, uh, I would just select uh, that method and then uh, hit OK. And you can see that it's uh, gone to exactly the same optimal value. So again, you know, the best value of x is 68.6 .6 degrees. That gives me an objective function of 2.115. Uh, but it got there a little quicker, right? So it only took 18 iterations. So that's kind of the advantage of, of that process. And, you know, a lot of times you'll set up your optimization uh, and you can sort of rock between two methods and make sure that they're giving you the same answer. Um, but but it's 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 easy to sort of uh, experiment with these methods as you're doing your optimization problem.